Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Writing Tips. Today what we're focusing on is responding to naysayers. If you are not familiar with Drake's hotline bling, I apologize for the PowerPoint you're about to see. I come up with ridiculous examples. So if you're not familiar with it, maybe watch the video if you're an adult and there are no children around. Okay. All right. So what a naysayer is, a naysayer is a person who is going to try to oppose your view. So what we want to do in the arguments that you are putting forth is we want to plant naysayers because they can actually give your argument a lot of credibility. So put the opponent first on any main point that you have. And really, this is going to be in any type of body paragraph. You don't want to have all sorts of naysayers in your paper, but you do want to plant one maybe once an essay. That's really going to help. So it's a good idea to give your argument the advantage of responding and therefore being heard last by the audience. This is because whatever the audience hears last always remains in their memory strongest. So a good thing that you can do is in a body paragraph, introduce opposing arguments first in a topic sentence and then come back and respond to it. Here's an example. This is the beginning of a paragraph. You can tell because it is indented. Although I agree with Drake to a point about loving one's bed and one's mama, I cannot accept his overall conclusion that these are the only things a person should love. And now you know for the rest of that body paragraph, we'll be digging into Drake's assertion that you should only love your bed and your mama and how the writer of this paper thinks that that's not such a great idea. Okay? All right. So be respectful to your opponent. You can do this by avoiding sarcasm, insults, or describing them or their ideas with language loaded with negative connotations. This is important because it is one of many techniques to show you are a person of character who deserves to be listened to. Now think about this. Lots of times in our world today, we have very, very heated topics. And what we tend to do with these heated topics is to demean or even dehumanize people that disagree with us. Now the moment you do that, you might rally the troops. You might get people that agree with you to pump their fists in the air and say, yeah, you're right. The problem with that is, is that you alienate people that disagree with you and they shut down. So instead of insulting, demeaning, or even dehumanizing people who disagree with you, be respectful. That's how you're going to be the most persuasive uh, writer and thinker possible. So instead of, here are some negative examples, many heartless Republicans don't care about gun violence, or clueless Democrats want to throw out the Second Amendment, try this. It's saying the same types of sentiments, but saying it in a respectful way. Republicans often view the issue of gun ownership as a right to defend oneself against tyranny, which is a tyranny, not tyrant. Or, in their effort to enact gun control, Democrats interpret the Second Amendment differently than their counterparts. See how that is actually respectful as opposed to insulting or having really negative connotations? That's going to make you much more persuasive. So even if you're writing about something that's incredibly controversial, whether it's political or religious even, just pump the brakes for a second and realize that you need to be respectful no matter what you think about your opponent. Okay? All right. More responding to naysayers. Give the naysayer a fair amount of time to speak. Don't just include what they believe, but also the reasons and evidence for why they believe it. A good rule of thumb is to give them at least a quarter to a third of the body of the essay to ensure you are not being lopsided in your argument. And that's a lot. That's a lot. I think you can do less than that. So this can demonstrate that you can have done your research and respect what your opponents say to learn what they have to say. Okay, here's a very brief example, and I can actually follow this up by including more evidence here. On the one hand, I agree with Drake that loving one's bed and one's mama is an excellent way to ensure we never encounter nor endure the lasting trauma of heartbreak. But on the other hand, I still insist that the vulnerable act of opening oneself to love in a romantic relationship to another person opens the door up to a more meaningful life. Okay. Making sense? Making sense? All right. Responding to naysayers. Uh, include all of the major counter arguments. So lots of times when we're thinking about how people would respond to us, we overlook things that are weaknesses in our own argument. And when you ignore those types of things, you seem like a less credible person who is making the argument. So include all those things. You might not even be able to, to shoot them all down. But the fact of the matter is, is that you can probably shoot most of them down and make a reasonable argument as to why you hold the most reasonable position. Okay, so 
It's damaging to your character if you leave out counter-arguments that you can't answer or that people can't think, can think of immediately, leading them to wonder why they aren't present. This is why doing thorough research is very, very important. So look at this example. While it is true that engaging in romantic relationships will possibly lead to trauma, pain, depression, anxiety, and even an anguishing sense of hopelessness, so I'm including all those things, right? I want to make sure that they're all out there so someone can understand why Drake thinks the way he does and why someone would respond to me in the negative. This is like making an argument for something that's really political and intense, like um, Medicare for all or something like that, and not including the counter argument that everyone always has to Medicare for all. Well, how do we pay for it, right? Skipping that in your paper makes you look like you're making an argument in bad faith, that you're not really thinking through everything that you should be thinking through. You might have a response to it, which is great, but if you omit it, you look weak in the process. Okay, ensure that you respond to every naysayer claim that you include. If you do not, it will leave weak points that can help unravel your entire argument. So here I have the exact same opening that I had in the previous slide. While it is true that engaging in romantic relationships will possibly lead to trauma, pain, depression, anxiety, and even an anguishing sense of hopelessness, and here's my follow-up, it does not necessarily follow that romantic relationships are not worth the risk as Drake claims. Most things we love in life require great risks in order to achieve, achieve great rewards. So I'm responding to all those naysayers. Yeah, it may be awful and brutal, but the fact of the matter is romantic relationships can be worth it. Okay? Be willing to concede that an opposing argument may be right. Be careful not to polarize your argument so much that you don't allow yourself to admit when a naysayer has a valid point. It might seem counterintuitive, but concessions can actually make you look more credible, showing that you're open-minded. Hey, goobers, keep it down. My kids are playing Minecraft. Did you play Minecraft? It's kind of fun. Okay, so here's my example. On the one hand, I agree with Drake that opening yourself to love is incredibly risky, and for some, their past experiences make the possibility of pain too much to handle. But on the other hand, I still insist that romantic love is a facet to our human experience that is too valuable to live without. Okay? So you can concede it. You can say, I can understand how some people might think it's just not worth it. Um, but still follow up, respond to it if you can. Okay, and lastly, make sure that you're using transitions to demonstrate when you switch from one point to another. Use things like on the contrary, however, in contrast, on the other hand. These are really important to make sure that you're avoiding confusion when necessary. Okay? All right, so that's how you respond to naysayers. It's a way that you can really build credibility or ethos within your own essay and arguments. All right, I hope you have a delightful week, and I will see you later.